Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got a video for you on a couple of really cool systems. Um, the first one is going to be this Bark River. Uh, I'm actually not 100% sure which model this is. I, I want to say this is the Mini Tundra. I could be wrong. Um, they don't put their uh, model names on every sheath or on every knife. Uh, and the customer actually didn't tell me what it was. So uh, I just knew it was a Bark River. But in any event... Um, this one is for my customer Andrew, actually for his girlfriend, and uh, props to her, man. She's got a sick knife in L Max. This is this thing is really great, uh, but she wanted the sheath to be carried on an Alti clip, and uh, we were talking about colors, and I kind of uh, threw it out there that I could do a snakeskin cover. So we got a uh, gray snakeskin on here. This is the natural color of the snake, as far as I know, and uh, she wanted the logo plate on there as well. So I did a floated plate. Um, just so that there would be the option of removing it, uh, just to show the full thing off in snakeskin. So that is, uh, that's why it's there. I also set this up ambidextrous because I didn't actually get the information that I should have. And I didn't ask if she was right or left-handed. So I currently have it set up to be something like a right hand pocket carry. Um, but you can set up the ulti clip at a bunch of different angles. You can see the drill hole pattern there affords a lot of different options. It's also compatible with the tech lock, so you do have, um, let me see, just real quick here. Yeah, I didn't set it up with the, uh, with all the same standard angles that I do on my normal tech lock setup because the ulti clip spacing is slightly different from the tech lock, so I favored the ulti clip, but it is compatible with tech lock in a few different positions. Um, and uh, what I mean by ambidextrous on this plate is that I actually took two pieces of the same color, put them back to back, and riveted them together. So they look like one piece. They look like one thick piece, but they're actually two pieces with a welded seam. So it's got a seamless edge there, nice and polished, all the finish work done. And uh, if you flip it over, the logo is on the other side as well. I'm 99% sure. Let me look in there and double check. Yes. Yep, the logo is on both sides, so you do have the option of entirely reversing this sucker and carrying it um, left-handed. So I thought this thing was pretty cool. Now, one thing with uh, some of the knives that I get in the shop is that if they have very, very little contour on the handle, um, the retention is bound to be slightly less than if they were to be, uh, you know, something with a lot of contour. There's just less to grip onto. And while there are some techniques to get around it, I only really do it if the knife is supposed to be carried like inverted or if it's a tactical situation kind of thing rather than, you know, this is obviously a camping, uh, a camping kind of tool. So, you know, this is not the sheath that you would take on, on a mission with you or if you were military. So, um, anyway, so I didn't see the need to, you know, really ramp the retention up super high, but it does have a good click in. No rattle, no play. Very, very smooth and comfortable draw. And it's got enough retention to retain your knife for all normal activity. I don't see this being an option, uh, an issue rather, especially because it's supposed to be inside the pocket or just carried without a belt. So we chose Alti Clip because, uh, you know, he had said she doesn't usually wear a belt, so she wants something where she can clip on either way, you know, no matter what she's doing, belt or no belt. So. This is the option to go for. I would highly recommend carrying this inside the waistband, inside the pocket, something like that. Or even if you had to tuck it behind your belt. Um, I definitely don't recommend, this is, a, this is actually really important. This is something I get requested a lot. And I'll do it if you guys want it. You're, it's your sheath, you do what you want with it. However, um, a lot of people request to avoid wearing a belt. They request an ulti clip for an outside the waistband sheath. Let me show you the issue with that, especially if you're talking about something that's not a really small knife. This is not a big knife, but it's not a small knife either. This is a really good medium EEC size knife. So I'm going to, I guess I carry it on my left side. Um, if I were to clip this onto my pocket, also, while we're at it, uh, you don't want to clip an Alti clip onto your belt because your belt is probably so wide that... You know, think about the fact that it's designed to clip onto fabric. If you clip onto something a lot wider, you're going to stretch out the spring and then it'll lose its 
its effectiveness in clamping onto thinner things like fabric. So, um, yeah, anyway. All right, so now I'm gonna get up on this step stool for you so you can actually see my pocket, but. Um, so it looks fine, draws great, resheathed, whatever. However, this thing has nothing stabilizing it. It's free to just kind of move around. At some point, this is going to tear your pants. At some point, um, you're going to have an issue. You're going to sit. You're going to smack this just right. Turns it upside down, rips things. Maybe the clip actually uh, unlocks or you know unclips or just rips or whatever. Um, so <clears throat> basically, the issue is that the Ulti clip creates... A very strong anchor point but it actually doesn't do anything to stabilize the sheath on your belt so that's why I don't recommend it for outside the waistband um, it also makes it really difficult to take off because then you have to reach inside to lift that tab up and undo and unlock the clip so yeah it's definitely better suited inside the waistband all right so that's this guy I believe this is a mini mini tundra I want to say bubblegum pink micarta or something Actually, I think this is G10, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but really nice little sheath and a really cool knife. I really like this thing. So, all right. Now we're going to get to the other knife, which is a much more budget-friendly option. Um, and it's not as high quality as a Bark River by any stretch. But the sheath is a little bit off the chain. So this thing's pretty cool. Um, so Andrew traded a knife to me. Uh, he traded me an SE5, and uh, we worked out a deal where that would contribute toward the cost of a system. And he wasn't sure what knife he wanted, but he wanted something big and choppy. I happened to have this knife, which I wanted to get rid of, um, or I was thinking about, you know, building a system and raffling it off or something like that. So anyway, when I had told him this option, he opted to go with it because he wanted this knife. And uh, so that, here we are. So this guy is the Ontario SP Bolo. So Ontario Knife Company, SP Bolo. It is a machete. It's kind of small for uh, as far as machetes go, but uh, it's a pretty cool knife. It's got a really big front uh, sweep there, really big belly, so you can get some good forward momentum when you're chopping. So this guy, I acquired this because I thought I was buying it to um, go toward a trade that I was doing with another guy but he was actually just recommending the knife to me as a good budget chopper so i didn't realize it was mine when i bought it i thought i was just buying it to go to him so anyway i had this knife um i do really like it it's just probably not the one for me so uh, i'm really glad to be sending it to a good home here but uh it's a pretty cool knife rubberized handle very comfortable and it's got really forward heavy swing to it. So I think this would do a real good job out in the brush. Um, we talked about how to carry it. Now, Andrew is uh, an avid fisherman. So he said he, a lot of the time he's out there, uh, you know, waiting, doing fly, fly fishing, whatever. And he wants to keep the sheath out of the water. He wants to be able to carry it up higher on himself. Uh, so I had talked about maybe Baldrick system, you know, wearing it on a sling. Uh, he wasn't sure. I talked about a chest carry. He wasn't totally sure about that. And then, uh, you know, jokingly, I'd thrown out, maybe I could build something where you draw over the shoulder. And he said, hey, maybe that's actually it. So uh, I actually built a system that is supposed to be worn on the back to draw over the shoulder, uh, over the shoulder kind of ninja style. Um, however, while I was in the process of building this harness setup, I got to thinking, why should it really stop there? So this is, uh, this is my first, you know, kind of over the shoulders kind of draw. Uh, I don't really know if that has an official name to it or not. So guys, if you know, just comment down below, correct me, fix me up. Um, but the it occurred to me that it shouldn't really just stop there. So you can actually reconfigure this to carry it on your chest. You can reconfigure it to carry it as a Baldrick system. And you can carry it as a dangler as well. So let me get into this and show you all the different little features here. This is pretty cool. Um, as it's set up right now... It's for the over the shoulder draw with your right hand. You should know the sheath is 100% ambidextrous. So any of the positions you find, you're going to need to, uh, or you'll be able to find in on the opposite hand. Um, one disclaimer is that if you're going to change positions, you're probably going to have to change, um, you know, if I went from carrying over the shoulder like this to carrying on the chest with a downward draw, something like that, 
you'd probably actually need to change the length of each strap. So the straps are all adjustable. Um, they are tense, they're not easy to adjust. So you do have to just kind of play with it a little bit, figure out where exactly you need that tension, how tight, how big you want the harness. Um, and then the other thing it affords is you have buckles on, I built this little, like, I don't even know what you want to call it, a Y connector. It's got D rings on it. And then off of each D ring, you have a strap with a buckle on it. So that means that you can actually undo all three buckles and you can turn the strap to be compatible with each of the other three buckles. So you've got three different positions, I guess you could, uh, you could orient that in, uh, or would it be more than three? Uh, yeah, whatever it is. Um, but you can reorient that. So if it's more convenient or if it feels more comfortable for each hand, whichever, uh, or it accommodates the length of the straps better, you can just reorient everything. That unfortunately means because there are so many options, you might actually have to mess with it a lot. Uh, to find what works for you and the more I mess with building harness systems the more I discover that it really depends on the size of your body to get everything set up just perfect so I set it up for my body I believe there's plenty of excess on here so you'd be able to uh, expand it if you're a bigger guy contract it if you're smaller and hopefully uh, hopefully find a position that's really good for you so let me show you how I would recommend putting this sucker on and uh, this, that was honestly the hardest thing I actually basically started over from scratch once I realized that the uh, just putting it on was an issue with the way I'd initially set it up. So, okay, what you're gonna wanna do is put, oh geez, now I've forgotten. Uh, hold on, bear with me one second. Yes, okay. So you're gonna wanna go, maybe you have to undo, yeah, sorry, I've already forgotten. I built it. I've just been waiting for a couple things to come in to attach the final pieces. I ran out of uh, strapping, so. All right, I think you wanna do it like that. You basically just take it off, you're spanning the system here, and you wanna clip over the shoulder first. Uh, so if you notice, I left the left side, the side that goes around my left, I left that strap connected. Um, and now I'm gonna just kinda reach under my armpit to grab this buckle and come over here finish it off all right so that i think that's about right um i feel like i had found an easier way of of doing it but that's what we got right now so you have a little bit of excess it's really easy to tuck the excess by running it through the d-ring it just gets it out of the way and then your system looks a little bit less uh ridiculous with straps hanging off everywhere so you can see it's got this y connector i made it nice and big so that it would be a little bit more comfortable um i didn't want to have it be you know all awkward pulling in a bunch of different directions but to me this is actually a super comfortable setup uh it might look a little bit ridiculous to be you know ninja carrying a machete or whatever but it really is really is super comfortable um obviously you're just going to reach up draw it like so that's pretty cool and then resheathing it is the hardest part here so i'm not at that point in my ninja zen where i can just you know throw the, the knife back into the sheath so what i would recommend if you also are not super ninja -y, is to just grab this strap to help pull the system up once it's up about that high i can actually see the opening pretty comfortably and then you just want to put the knife back in um my tendency when I put it back in is to have the handle be a little bit too far that way. So I just use my thumb to find that thumb ramp, make sure that the handle is riding nice and high, and then it should seat right down in there. Because it's a rubberized handle and uh, you can't make it, if you make the sheath too aggressive on the retention, you're going to wear the rubber down over time. So it doesn't have a big click the way I've got it set up right now. The retention is pretty decent, uh, but it doesn't have, you know, that big Kydex click or anything like that. Um, so when you put it back in, you just have to push until you feel it bottom out. I'm kind of cheating right now and using the camera like a mirror to find, find that hole. But hopefully you can see that there. As I went to put it in, you can see the knife is a little bit too far that way. So I have to seat it and then push it in. So you can feel it bottom out. But anyway, that's what we got here with this system. Taking it off again. Oh, this is, maybe this was it. You probably want to just undo this one strap 
and then you can do it over your head like that. So yeah, maybe you put your left shoulder through, put it on, grab your buckle. That was it right there. There you go. And it's already riding pretty good and high for, uh, for a good draw. So as always, you can readjust things. Uh, I like to end up, you know, kind of hiking this up, pulling it down and lowering the chest strap. That seems to bring it up to a really good height for me. I tried making this stay off the neck just because uh, the nylon webbing that I'm using is actually really durable. It's also kind of chafy and aggressive. Um, so it should last a long time, but you probably don't want it directly on your skin. It doesn't feel particularly comfortable. Uh, so anyway, that's what we got for you. So let me show you really quick. I'm not going to undo this whole system and uh, reconfigure the straps for you or anything because it just takes so long to do anything with it. But um, I can just undo this. There we go. All right. So, looking at the plate here, um, you're going to have the option to configure this in a bunch of different ways. Drew, the reason I have these two buckles inside the plate and this one outside the plate, uh, sorry, D-rings and the adapters, is because if this guy is inside, I originally had it set up inside, kind of hidden the way these guys are between the plate and the sheath. Um, the reason this guy is outside is because I found out that if you have it behind, then the strap is going to travel, it's going to pull from here, not here, and then it's going to want to be lower on your back. So it's actually like really uncomfortably low. I could only grip the tip of the handle with my thumb and forefinger instead of being able to get a real grip on it. So um, putting it down here allows this strap to go over your shoulder and kind of levers it upward like so, riding high enough for you to actually get a hold of it. That's why it is the way it is. Um, you can see there are a lot of eyelets on this thing. I probably could have put some more in there for who knows what exactly, but uh, I set it up intentionally with a lot of different options as far as where you could put any of these D-ring adapters. They all have three-quarter inch spacing. Um, some of the eyelet spacing on here is not three-quarter inches. It's just eyelets to hold things, but I believe every single eyelet on here is compatible with at least one other eyelet. So you have the option of finding some angle, uh, whatever's going to be most convenient for you to use this in. Um, yeah, like I said, it's set up so that you can reorient your harness and carry the knife like so on your chest. You get a nice draw like that. That's one of my favorite ways to carry is, uh, you know, on the, on the chest angled downward like this for your dominant hand to draw. I think that's a really cool way to carry very comfortable uh, another thing you can do is if you take your let's see where would it be well so it would it would leave one strap just kind of doing nothing but if you wanted to you could span let me do it real quick for you And I'm not saying this is necessarily the uh, the buckle configuration that I would use to do it, but you absolutely could reposition. I would reposition that front D-ring and then, you know, lengthen it out a little bit so you can imagine it hanging down here. And then you've got a baldric sling. You just have this one extra strap uh, hanging out there. And then what I actually did, <coughs> you'll notice this, Drew, when you get it. But the nylon that composes most of the strapping is uh, a little bit flexible. But the one, the nylon that I used for this Y connector, as well as for the strap coming off here, is super stiff. It's really thick, really rugged, durable nylon. And the reason I used it for uh, the Y connector is just because this piece, I think, needs to be really durable. And then uh, I also used it here. And I also set this strap up a little bit different from the others so that if you want to you could drop this down or you can open the ring up and take it off and you can actually wear this as a dangler so I set up some attach points up here you'd want to reorient the ring up to the top I'd probably just take this off altogether this buckle and you can just rock this as a leather or as a, as a nylon dangler so it probably carry 
you know, right up here. The top of the handle would be right around the top of your belt. Uh, so I thought that was a really cool idea. It's very, very versatile and you just have a ton of options. Because it is three quarter inch spacing, you technically could also run molly locks or a tech lock on here. So if you ever wanted to carry it on a pack, um, you'd be able to do that. The spacing, as far as you know, putting mollies on it, I didn't think ahead to, to make it exactly you know, molly compatible as far as the, the width goes. But if you put like one long molly lock right here, or even you know, two shorter ones right next to it, you know, right on top of each other, you'd have a really solid system set up for molly. So um, anyway, this is a really versatile carry option. Uh, this harness takes a lot of time to build, it took a lot of thought and a lot of measuring and double checking and all that, but I think it did come out really nice. Hopefully it was uh, worth the wait for you, Drew. He's been waiting for a little while to get this, so I'm really proud of how this came out and uh, hopefully he likes it. But anyway, I'd love your opinions, guys. What did you think of this thing? And uh, I'm trying to figure out how to put it all back together real quick. All right, one more time, how to get this guy on. Handle upward, undo the right armpit or right chest strap. Oh no, that was backward, wasn't it? Exactly backward. There we go. Your head and your left shoulder go through. Grab your buckle behind you, snap it shut, reposition, and you're good to go. So, all right. Anyway, guys, I would love your opinion on this. Let me know what you think of the SP Bolo from uh, Ontario Knife Company, and let me know what you think of this kind of carry setup. Um, not just carrying here, but the idea of having this plate and harness system that's adaptable to switch positions. So you got carrying on your back, carrying on your chest. You can also orient it with the handle upward or downward for either hand. Uh, you got a leather, I keep saying leather dangler, you got a nylon dangler and you have a means of carrying in some configuration of baldric. So I'd love your opinions. Hit it down below in the comments section. And uh, as always, I appreciate you sticking around. Tune in for the next one. God bless.